to Heart to Heart. We are here today discussing a pretty uh, sensitive and important topic, uh, autism. And we have with us today uh, one of our good friends, Rachel Squires. Hi, Rachel. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. I'm and we, fine. And we have her friend that we were just meeting for the first time, Pandora. Last name again? Via Senor. Via Senor. Wow. I, I, was, I almost said Via Senora. But it's Via Senor. <laughs> via Senor. Pandora Via Senor. What a great uh, a lyrical name. That's great. Thank you. Now, you're the director of uh, a company that deals with autism. What's the name of that company? Wellspring. Wellspring. Where's that located? It's actually located just a few miles from here in North Hills is okay. the corporate headquarters. Okay. Great. Um, but we are all over Southern California. Wow. Okay. Now, now why don't we explain uh, to our audience what Wellspring is uh, known for and what you guys do there? We do behavior therapy. It's um, actually based on a scientific method called applied behavioral analysis. Mm -hmm. And we work with children with autism and other developmental disabilities to help them with um, some of their skill deficits and also to decrease some of the behaviors that may not be socially appropriate. Okay, so, well, let's do this. Let's talk to Rachel because then we can... Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because Rachel, is, she's got the child. <laughs> you I, was know, just, I was actually just going to do that, but I was going to do it in a much smoother way. Sure, go ahead. I was going to go, let's talk well, to Rachel no, for a second. Because, because that's how she comes into play. You know, first yeah. we... Uh, we have to I have swear to you, I was just going to do that. I was just going to slide right over to Rachel, but that's fine. I'm sorry, it's your stripes. I got confused. It's all right. I'm sorry. We match day, seeing black and white. We do. Let's black, talk to Rachel. Okay. Here we go. So, well, well, first of all, Rachel, I've known Rachel for 13 years. Yes. And so, and she looks the same as she did the day I met her. Which Congratulations, yeah. Rachel. Thank you. you know, so, it must, uh, it must, something must be working right. Um, but, uh, Rachel, so you have a son, you have two boys. I have two. I have uh, Michael and Jordan. Okay. Where'd you get those names? I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Just asking. All right, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and uh, Michael is how old now? Michael is turning 17 in June, wow. okay. and Jordan is turning 14 in June. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael is your older boy, and yes. he's the one that has been diagnosed with autism. Yes. Okay. So, boy, just to start off, like, so was he born this way, or kind of give us an idea of what actually happened? I think, you know, what happened was um, my mom actually brought it to my attention because when he was two, he wasn't talking. Okay. And um, she said, Rachel, there's something, there's something wrong. You should be talking more. So um, was he trying to communicate with you, or just not actually saying words? Um, he he would try. You know, he mm -hmm. would try. He'd say, Mama. He'd babble. Um, so what happened was, and sometimes I'd call him and he wouldn't look back, so he mm. wouldn't, he wouldn't respond. So I thought, okay, maybe there was something wrong with this hearing. Okay. So I took him to Kaiser and had his hearing tested and it was fine. There was nothing wrong. So I decided, um, three months from there because he was pretty young, he was about two years and two months when okay. I had his hearing tested, about two years and seven months I put him, um, in Kaiser speech therapy. So he did speech therapy for about six to eight weeks, and that's where he was actually diagnosed with autism. So he wasn't responding to their therapy, so they did extra, they did more tests on him? Yes, they did more tests where they would take him in one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and then there would be times that they would bring, um, uh, George, uh, excuse me, Michael's father, myself, and my mother, because she was living with us at the time, okay. and we'd also be involved with the therapy. And um, it took about eight weeks for them to make their diagnosis. And I remember them coming to me saying, could you get your husband and your mother together because we'd like to speak to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And wow. um, they said, do you know what autism is? Mm -hmm. And at the time, my response was, the only thing I knew about autism was the Rain Man. Oh, yeah. And oh, so right. yeah. that was it. And I, that's what I told them. I said, the Rain Man, that's the only thing that you know mm -hmm. I could relate it to. Right. And um, from there, I actually took him to the regional center. Mm -hmm. And um, and he's still two two years old this time. Like no, he now. by this time um, he was he was he was a little older. He was closer to three, closer okay. to three. Right. Um, I took him to the regional center, and um, the regional center didn't feel like he was autistic, even though he had a diagnosis okay. as being autistic. Mm -hmm. And they said, "Well, we see ADHD." You know, they didn't particularly see it but thank God that um, Michael's father is a very persistent man mm. and he does not take no for an answer mm -hmm. and um, he actually persisted with it and had more testing done and he was diagnosed. Yeah when they do testing do they do testing of the brain or they do like the mobiles I mean like what do they do? Well it's it's a little bit it's like a case study and that he has had a scan on his head because actually. And what does it show? 
You know what? Honestly, I'll be honest with you. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. I know that we had him tested uh, later. Well, we'll come to that, but we okay. just had him tested for seizures to see if he was having um, seizures. So okay. what goes through your mind as a parent when you realize that your child is autistic? It, I mean, or is honestly, not perfect like you thought Well, you know what? Honestly, for me, I've always been the type of people person that I want to know what I'm dealing with. So yes. I was never the type to, I wasn't, when I found out, I wasn't upset, not that kind of upset. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit relieved because there was a label to it. Then I mm -hmm. knew how to deal with right. it. Because mm -hmm. it scared me more not knowing mm -hmm. than um, anything else. His father, in the beginning, was the one that says, mm, he took it a little harder. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, I don't know, you know. But luckily, you know, he, he, he listened and, he came to terms with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now he's 17, or he's going to be 17 now. Right. Well, actually, by the time this airs, he'll be 17. Right. Probably. So you've had this moment for 15 years yeah. now dealing with this. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, for what, 16 years. What is yeah. it? What is what is the day in the life of uh, of an autistic child, and especially wow. one that's a teen, like well, you know, especially being a teenager, because not only being autistic, but then uh, I remember sitting in occupational therapy one time with them, and the woman was telling me that, and Michael was about probably about I don't know twelve, and or excuse me, eleven, and she said when he gets to be a teenager, there might be some challenges there, because you know just going through puberty and just mm -hmm. being autistic already, and um, Michael was never on medication. He, mm -hmm. We never had him on medication, but when he turned fifteen we actually had to put him on medication. Um, first of all, my son, because he became, um, first of all, my son is very big. He's six five. He's oh a big gosh. guy. You've seen him, Bendor. He's a, he's a big guy. Mm. And um, um, he's just, a, I come up to his, to his chest. Wow. And, oh so, mm -hmm. and so, and um, so, sometimes he gets like a little he gets he can be he can get a little irate like if he wants to be left alone mm -hmm. or something he, be, he can become <laughs> he can become violent Six and that's five, why wow. we wow. had to actually get the medication for him and now and, the medication calms him down well yes there, he's actually there was two medications given there was a medication that he would take on a daily basis mm -hmm. and a medication where it's very severe and we try not, it depends upon how he is, because we try not, the side effects of the medication that um, when he's very severe is weight gain and, um, and diabetes, probably mm. because of the weight gain, and right. it's rampant in my family. So mm. we, we try not to, but honestly, recently, it's been really hard. It's really hard. And with Michael, mm. he could go he could go six months fine and then all of a sudden out of nowhere just his behavior just changes and um just in a week or two or three or four just be totally different Can I ask, now, i'm sorry I know, I have so many questions. I do too. I was going to ask, <laughs> ask Pandora, um, what, would you, what would you do in a case like this with someone so large and so mm -hmm. actually so old who's autistic? I mean, what do you guys do well, treating something like that? One of the things we do is in-home parent consultation. So we'll mm -hmm. meet with the family and kind mm -hmm. of get a sense of what's happening right before he's acting that way and what's happening during mm -hmm. the time that he's acting that way and then what happens after. Because that helps us kind of pinpoint what he's mm -hmm. trying to actually accomplish through that behavior. Because everybody has a payoff for their behavior, right? We're always mm -hmm. doing something to get something. Mm -hmm. And so we might analyze that and then work with the parent to, like a consultant, to go, right. you know what? It looks like when he's behaving this way, he's actually trying to communicate this. Oh, and okay. so when you see him starting, when you start seeing some of those early signs of that behavior, why don't you try doing this? Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of guiding the parent and how to deal. Because a lot of times, they're feeding off of our own reactions. Sure. So let me ask you a question, maybe either one of you can answer this. Right. What does it mean to be autistic? What's happening in his brain? Well, autism affects the social behavior, mm -hmm. it affects okay. the speech, mm -hmm. and um, it also affects uh, social speech and um, I'm just drawing a blank. That's okay. Well, That's okay. right. I can fill that in for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's three different areas that mm -hmm. it affects. It affects, like you said, social speech, and then the third indication is repetitive behaviors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So oh. if you so send, they want to do it, they, they want they, to do repetitive. There'll be these repetitive behaviors that'll be an indication, mm -hmm. like say hand flapping or um, twirling or um, maybe rocking back and forth. So does that make them feel comfortable when you do that? Is that what? Because that's, that's what that's what that's what we yes. think is that yes. it's somehow oh. there's some. Some children with autism, or one of the things that, that it, the theory is, is that there's um, sensory 
sensory mm-hmm. needs and those those self-stimulating activities help to comfort them in some way. So keeping a house, okay. keep, keeping a, having a routine for them every day that's sort of a repetitive yeah. routine is a good thing. Probably. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. yes. And okay. with Michael, we mm-hmm. have that. Mm-hmm. It's, we have a routine. He, he, like he knows he gets up, he goes to school, he knows mm-hmm. the schedule. Mm-hmm. He gets up, goes to school, comes back, he has a snack at a certain time, he takes a shower at a certain time, he eats around a certain now, time. Now does he day. shower by himself? We do let him shower by himself. Okay. However, we will go in there when he's done and just go behind him. Mm-hmm. He'll do his hair and everything, but of course, soap and everything is. To, but he tries. And now, what about is he shaving? Because I'm sure his he's... father shaves him. Okay. And yes, he had a full fledged beard at the age of 15. <laughs> wow. Well, I still can't grow a whole beard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working really it's hard. Okay, at you're that. still trying. Working really hard at that. The, yes. um, the so he goes to school by himself. He's actually he has an aide. Okay. Um, we're really blessed because he's in the help group, which is a mm. private school mm-hmm. that, that works in that area. Mm. He was in public school, but honestly, in my opinion, for Michael, they, you know, it's just, that's what they specialize yeah. there. Okay. And so they could deal with him oh, better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, what happened with potty training when he was a baby? Oh, wow. When, okay. <laughs> potty training was very hard for uh-huh. Michael. Yeah. Very hard. And um, it took Michael till he was about seven, uh, mm-hmm. seven. And even now, I'll be honest with you, sometimes he's still, he'll, he can go to the bathroom and everything, but right. maybe cleaning himself, he isn't the best, but he does okay. try. Um, he had a hard time when he was younger. And it was funny because when we were potty training him, I had Jordan and I had to watch it because he wouldn't grab the concept, but he would try to pick up his little brother and set him inside the door. One time I came in, he was like, ah! Oh no. Yes, because oh, he was. would react. Yeah, he wanted to to because we were working with him on yeah. it. Mm-hmm. He was um, working it out with his brother. Wow. Oh. Now you now your your youngest boy doesn't have autism. No. No. Oh, no. Well. no. So how does he deal with it? Um with with Jordan, um it's sort of like Jordan's an only child to a certain extent. Mm. I mean, when he was younger, um they played together, but it was more parallel play because Jordan, mm-hmm. you know, he was into it imaginary play with his airplanes and things like that. Michael didn't want that. He wanted a screwdriver. He wanted realistic things. Oh, he okay. actually got um, his father's uh, toolkit one day, and uh, he couldn't have been no more than, I don't know, six, five, very young, but always big for his age. He actually took the screwdriver out and unscrewed the door from the hinge. We walked into the bedroom and it, got, it was so quiet. We're like, what's going on back there? He had unscrewed the door huh. and had it setting on the side. Hmm. So he's now, that do type you of praise him when he does? I mean, like what happens when he does something well, like that? Well, he didn't get in trouble, but I was right. like, in, wow, you know, mm-hmm. wow. Uh, once before, Kenny had a VCR, had all these parts. Mm-hmm. He, had this, he just went and he, of course it wasn't plugged in or anything, right. but he just went and he just started put stuff back together. And actually, I don't know if it was a fluke. I don't know. But when Kenny turned it on, it worked. Oh, my God. Hey, you know, we have to That's start wrapping up, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to ask if Pandora or Rachel has some advice for parents out there that may have yes. autistic kids. Can you give us any tips? And or if give, you can't, uh, speak to the tip? camera because that's, you know, they're in our living room with yeah. us. You know, yeah. we'll, go wanna... first. well, go ahead. Well, all I would suggest is that um, tap into your resources, develop a support network. I think one of the most important things is to have those resources and Mm -hmm. know that you have other people in your community to help. Like, for example, Wellspring does free community playgroups twice a month in different locations Mm -hmm. um, to give parents that opportunity. It's free and it's an opportunity to connect with other Mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do the second Saturday of every month in Thousand Oaks um, at Old Meadows Park and then the third Saturday of every month in Westwoods Recreation Center. And just take advantage of those. There's other free resources. Tap Mm -hmm. into, you know, the Autism Society. Tap into the regional centers and find out what's out there. And um, early intervention is key. The earlier you can get in and start targeting some of these Mm -hmm. behaviors, Mm -hmm. the um, the more success that we've seen scientifically proven using applied behavior analysis. Right. Mm-hmm. And now coming from the mom who's living with it day to day, mm-hmm. what do no, you say? No, I, I, I agree with what Pandora was saying. I mean, as far as, um, you know, getting, uh, we actually sent Michael to the uh, Saturday program, which was sponsored through the regional center, mm-hmm. which was great. So try to keep him involved with, you know, other children that or his mm-hmm. peers is mm-hmm. great. And because they lack that social, it's good to keep them involved yes. Right. Yes. with sure. other. They may not relate to actually the normal child, mm-hmm. but they do relate to each other, yeah. okay. you know. So I just think that's 
very, um, very important. Yeah. Very important. And and I, I saw what I want to say too about Rachel is that, <laughs> you know, this is definitely something that not all of us deal with. And it's mm -hmm. something that it's an ongoing, it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, but she is the, one of the most uplifting, <laughs> positive yes, people that I've right. ever met in my life. Really yeah. though, sweetie. She And she always has. Uh -huh. I mean, I will get scriptures from her all the time. Mm -hmm. um, she owns her own business. She owns a daycare. Yeah, in yeah. Where, Where's your daycare? Um, it's a family daycare out of my home. Okay. And so it's in Tarzana. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to put that on you know the website. It's called Happy Days. Happy Kids. I'm oh, sorry. Happy Kids. <laughs> happy Days. Yeah, happy, happy Days. Happy Days. It was a show in the 70s. <laughs> I'm sorry. With Fonzie. But Happy Kids. Yeah. And... Um, you know, she's just, that's awesome. I mean, what, what, I, I'm kind of speechless because I look at myself and I'm like, man, I pity myself on stupid things. And mm -hmm. here you are and you've never, I've never heard one negative word come out of her mouth. Really? Yeah. A lot, of, a, a, lot of us, a, a lot of us think we have issues to deal with. And when you deal with something like this, it just adds a whole different mm -hmm. dimension to what you have to deal with. All the other all, things that life brings you anyway, and then they have to deal with this on top of it. It's pretty Right. Incredible. And always yeah. a smile on her face. Always yes. joy all yes. the time. Yeah. I, I just, I look at Michael as being a gift from God. And Amen. it's a lesson yeah. to me and to everyone around him to learn love and patience. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really, you know, there's, it's, it's difficult, but he's brought a lot of joy in our lives. And honestly, I can't imagine my life without him, mm -hmm. even with all the all the issues. That well, well, that, well that, that, that's it how she's a, able to have a daycare with all the other kids. Right. Wow. <laughs> that's probably a breeze, right? Well, we need to uh, wrap up. Do we, you guys have a, a we have a scripture. We have a scripture. You have a foundation scripture. Do you know what it is? Yes, Exodus 14, 14. I'll look this up. Wait, look, I have it marked right here. <laughs> it's really quick. Yeah, Exodus 14, 14. Do you want to say it? Want me to say it? You can say it. I'll say it. Okay. <laughs> Exodus 14, 14 is the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So there you go. Thanks yeah. very much, Rachel. Yeah, she has a display of peace here. Yeah, yeah. she okay. has. She she is. And, she, and, and uh, the Lord is fighting for her, too. Yeah. And uh, Pandora, thank you. Nice thank to you. meet you. Nice to meet you, All too. the best with it. And this has just been great. This is the this is the brochure here, Wellspring. Anyway, uh, thanks, guys, for coming on. And I guess we'll you. sign off from our heart to yours. This is Butch Hartman and Julianne Hartman. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. watching. Mm -hmm.